Hello my lovelies, welcome back to I Dream of Homestead. I'm Josefina and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys how I make birria tacos. This is me being hopeful that all these ingredients would fit into a smaller pot that would be easier to look into, to which I added five pounds of chuck roast that I cut into chunks. one whole onion halved, seven cloves of garlic, three bay leaves, and two teaspoons of salt. Then I switched it over to a larger, more reasonable pot and made sure all the meat was covered with water. Every once in a while, you're gonna to wanna to skim the surface of any foam and let it boil covered for three hours. Now that this has boiled for three hours, I've turned it off and I'm going to remove all of the meat and strain out the bits of onion and garlic that are left inside of it. Now that I've got the meat taken out, I'm actually gonna strain this into a smaller pot that's easier to see into, since it's actually gonna fit this time. <laughs> now that this is strained, I'm going to move it off to the side so that I can heat my comal in preparation for toasting some of these herbs and chiles that are going to create the sauce for the birria. Before I move on to making the sauce, I'm actually going to return the meat to the pot because once I have the sauce made and I add it into the broth, I'm gonna let the meat cook just a little bit longer to allow it to absorb some of those spices and chile flavors that are gonna be in there. So for the sauce, I have 12 guajillo chiles, three ancho chiles, four pasilla chiles, three large tomatoes, six cloves of garlic, four bay leaves, one tablespoon of sesame seeds, and a cinnamon stick that I broke a one inch piece off of. I also have one tablespoon of oregano, one teaspoon of black peppercorns, two teaspoons of cumin seeds, one teaspoon of marjoram, and one teaspoon of thyme. To prepare the chiles for toasting them up before I boil them, I'm going to remove the stems as well as the seeds that are inside. I do notice with chile ancho that they do tend to be sticky on the inside, so it involves just a little bit more work than the other chiles do, but that's totally normal. These chiles are actually dry poblano chiles, and I absolutely love the way these smell dry because they have this like really yummy fruity smell, kind of like a cross between a raisin and a tamarindo pod. I wanna take some of these peppers and try to germinate them on a paper towel to see if they actually work. From my understanding, a lot of these chiles are dried in an oven, and so I don't, I don't know that they would actually grow because of that, but just in case, I wanna just give it a shot and see. Now that the chiles are all de-seeded, I'm going to start giving them all just a little bit of a toast on the coman. You can do this in a dry saute pan if you don't have a coman. While these are toasting, I also set a pot of water to boil in the back so that I can transfer these into that pot when they're all done. I just want these to toast for about a minute because I want them to develop their flavor more. I don't want them to burn because when they burn, they taste bitter.
Now that I've got some space, I'm also going to add in my garlic cloves to get those nice and roasted. Okay, I'm gonna remove those and set them aside. Now with the chiles and the garlic nice and toasted, I'm going to also roast the sesame seeds, the cinnamon, and the four bay leaves. And this is a dry pan, so just keep things moving. And when the sesame seeds start to develop color and you can smell the cinnamon, that's when you know you can remove everything. Now that the sesame seeds are toasted, I'm gonna put them in the blender. I've moved the pot of water forward and now I'm gonna add the chiles in there. I'll put a lid on this and let it come to a boil. I let the chiles boil for about five minutes. While the chiles are sitting in the water, I'm gonna add in the remaining spices. So that's the black peppercorns, oregano, thyme, marjoram, cumin seed, whole cloves, as well as the garlic that I roasted. I also forgot to mention earlier that I also will be adding in a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. To all those spices, I'm also adding in the chiles. None of these chiles that I've added in are going to add in any kind of spice to it. These are all purely for flavor. To this, I'm also gonna add half a cup of the meat cooking liquid, just to make it easier for blending. Looks like I actually need just a little bit more cooking liquid, so I'm gonna add that to help it move along. Now that I've got the puree done, I've turned the pot back on and I'm going to add this right in. You do have the option of straining it to get out any little bits of seeds or chunks that didn't puree well, but to save time for myself, I am skipping that step today. I'm gonna mix that in well and let that cook for about an hour or until the meat is completely fork tender. So the meat's been simmering for about an hour. Now I'm going to take it out and set it aside to cool before I shred. I'm setting aside some of the broth before I add in the pureed tomatoes. And this is what I'm going to use to dip the tortillas into and give them a light fry when I make the tacos. While the meat was cooking, I set all three tomatoes to boil and now I'm going to put them in the blender, puree them and add them into the pot. Turn the heat back on under the pot, and now I'm adding in the tomato puree, and this is what's going to turn this into the consomme. I'm gonna let this come up to a boil, and then I'll check it for seasoning. The purpose of this consomme is to put aside in a cup or in a little bowl, and dip your tacos into it. Take sips of it if you want as you eat it and enjoy it. While the broth is simmering and the meat's cooling, I'm going to chop up the onion and the cilantro as well as the lime to add on top of the tacos when they're ready.
So I've got that broth that I had set aside and I'm just gonna dip my tortilla into it. And from there, I'm gonna add that to the pot. And give it a turn to coat it. Once I've got both sides nice and crisped up, I'm gonna add in the toppings. I've got the consomme on the side to dip into. Time to give them a taste. My husband is gonna be so happy. <laughs> oh my god. Mm -mm. I can't even, I can't even dance right now. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my god. Because I just, I need a moment alone with these. Just kidding. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is so good. I hope you guys try these out. They are so good. In the end, after I tasted the broth, I did end up adding just a little bit more salt and a quarter cup more of apple cider vinegar. So in total, it was half a cup of apple cider vinegar into it. Uh, this is so, so good. For today's video i hope that you guys enjoyed it if you did please give me a thumbs up let me know in the comments below if you try it if you follow me on instagram send me some pictures and show me what you've made it always brings me so much joy when people send me pictures of the recipes that they've tried and if you haven't already i hope you're willing to stick around with me for a while and hit that subscribe button i'll see you soon